Hey everyone, I'm Jay. I'm Lawrence. <laughs> and I'm Ty. Welcome to Witches and Twigs. <laughs> Let's do it over. No, I like it. I, I, I think Lawrence should stay here. I think Lawrence. No, Lawrence no. Stay. <laughs> does, does Sophia want to? Is Sophia there? Or is it just Lawrence? I mean, I'm here. I'm uh, Sophia. But maybe Lawrence is going to cut in a little bit in the episode, you know. <laughs> just to uh, say, hey. I'm here too, bud. We we gotta. <laughs> this is the episode where we we announce our fourth member, Lawrence. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh shit. Good. Um, this is uh what I'm gonna call the meta episode. <laughs> um, or the thanks for watching. Wow, it's fifty. Holy shit, we're at fifty. Mm -hmm. This is number fifty. So it's the meta episode. So it's the episode where we talk about ourselves. We talk about the podcast and what the mm -hmm. fuck we're doing with it and how we feel about it. So it's gonna be a fun one. It's gonna be a very chill sort of thing. But I do We've have been a here for fifty years. Fifty years. Yeah, it's fifty episodes. Like fifty years in like which like which time or something or it's fifty years in podcast time. Yeah, there you go. I know for for a podcast to get the fifty episodes is actually pretty impressive because a lot Oof. of podcasts like yeah. they start off and then they kind of die off real quick. Yeah, mm -hmm. podcasts um, are just short little born things that have a birthday every two weeks, and that's why they get sold so quick, you know. So it's the fiftieth yeah. birthday of our podcast. Ta-da! We're old now. Yeah, yes, we're all we've come ancient. a far a far way since sitting at my kitchen table. <laughs> yeah, we really have though. But before now we're we... all sitting at our own tables in our chairs. Before mm -hmm. we get into um the podcast talking about us and stuff, do we want to address current events? Because this pod this this episode will actually be posted really soon. Like it'll it won't be posted oh. this Wednesday. It'll be you know coming. Is this gonna upset our posting schedule? Because I want death on the day before Halloween. God damn it. Uh, I think it might. I'm not sure. We'll shuffle some shit around. But <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll, we can. We'll... Um, no, 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 because this will get posted in early October. So then, yeah, we'll be fine. The death episode will still be right around Halloween. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we'll be fine. Um, this is just next in the line because 49 is up right now, and here's episode 50. Mm -hmm. But we actually we didn't really do anything for any other milestone episodes. But mainly I was just thinking of um, current events in this whole presidential election thing just got things kind of flipped around unexpectedly. I don't know if we wanted to talk about that or if we wanted to save that for another episode. Trump's getting rushed to the hospital, hospital. as we speak. Yep. Yep. yep, yep, yep. He got helicoptered to some private military hospital. How do we feel about it? I hope he dies. Yeah, me too. Yeah, okay. All right, well, we're all in agreement. Well, that's the episode, everyone. <laughs> Roll credits. I'm literally I... sipping hot chocolate over here, like the Kermit <laughs> pose, too, just saying, I hope he dies. So let's talk. I, I normally don't talk numbers in the podcast, and I'm sure even you guys could vouch for that. Like, even when we have our little meetings and stuff, I'm not like, we're up 29% from last month. Don't blah, blah. curse it. <laughs> well no that that wasn't the actual number but like i don't really i don't really treat the podcast it's not like a board meeting you know what i mean but um since we were doing our 50th episode i got curious and so i started looking at our stats and all kinds of cool stuff um so i think we'll just start with the the, the big cumulative thing so me and sophia kind of remember what was it like a month ago that we had six thousand downloads or something like that? Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah, it was like just about a month ago, maybe a month and a half ago, we had six thousand downloads. We're up to sixty six twenty nine now, which is Ooh, a geez. huge jump and mm -hmm. way more than I'm willing to wrap my head around. Thanks for the love, y'all, but like, damn. <laughs> And I was seeing here, we actually had a huge uptick from last month. So in August, it said we had a total of 550 uh, downloads. And in September, we had 831, which is our biggest our biggest jump. So something really, something happened to where, you know, we kind of got on the radar of of, uh, of more people. So if uh, if 
you're a listener and you're one of the people that, you know, because word of mouth is huge. And I'm sure that's probably how most of this gets um, around, I would imagine, mm-hmm. is word of mouth. Because we don't do paid advertising. We don't we don't do a whole lot of social media like work. Most of our social media these days have just been Sophia posting stuff because I don't have the energy to. Um, I've been taking a break on that, too. I oh, haven't have had any good uh, stuff since I've been going I haven't been going out. So, like, we kind of run this podcast as, like, a, it's, it's like a by the seat of passion our pants. Project. Passion project. By the seat of our pants kind of thing. And we're figuring out, we're figuring it out as we go. And so for us not really having a <laughs> directed marketing campaign for this, this is huge. These, mm-hmm. that's, that's just insane. Um, I Y'all wanted, are the best. Yes. Because honestly, and I know, like, every, like, influencer whatever says you know without you it's it's true though like without you there these numbers wouldn't be here right Mm -hmm. i Uh, think it means i think something like that means more coming from people like us and in like in the way that which is betwixt is designed it's just because like like sophia said it's a passion project we really don't care about the numbers in that way we're excited to see the numbers and they're staggering and they humble us a lot but we're not chasing the numbers you know Mm -hmm. what i mean yeah yeah and i think that's why it means something more you know yeah Mm -hmm. at the end of the day i'm gonna be here saying stupid shit and giving my opinion at the end like regardless of the numbers but it just makes me feel like so much more excited and like want to have better conversations and like really feel like i have something to look forward to you know and when shit's rough and I I don't necessarily have a lot going on. Like the podcast has kind of been like my fucking bedrock, man. Mm-hmm. Like even even prior to COVID, when I was like stuck working at that shitty Lush factory because fuck Lush, man. Um, and like uh, I'll, that was one of the things that would get me through each week was like being able to record every fucking Saturday or Saturday, every Wednesday. You know, like kind of kept me solid, right? Yeah, it's something to look forward to, and you know, you get to talk about things that you like to talk about with people that also like to talk about the things. So it's yeah. it's just a really cool experience that we get to keep doing this, you know, over and over, over again. And we haven't gotten sick of it yet, which is also very telling that we haven't. We're not like scraping the barrel for like ideas, you know. Um, yeah, I wanted to talk about our first episode though, because our first our first episode is very near and dear to my heart because I think it took us. I think we recorded half of the actual first episode, and then we got interrupted, and then I think we lost it. The actual actual first episode, I guess you would call it the pilot. I'm trying to remember, Scott. I think your mom came in. I don't. I I remember her being like. Oh, are you guys doing your podcast? <laughs> yeah, and then starts banging around in the kitchen, like while we're recording in the kitchen, and we were like, "Okay." <laughs> so yes, um, that whole episode was lost. So the actual episode one is a rehashing <laughs> of the pilot episode that was lost to the ages in the sound of banging of pots and pans. Um, <laughs> uh, but so the first episode, um, so the first 30 days that it was up when I got us up on Buzzsprout, cause actually first, when I first started the, when, when I first started uploading, I put everything on SoundCloud and I thought, oh, SoundCloud will be fine. And then I found out SoundCloud kind of sucks for podcasts. It's not, it's not really mm-hmm. ideal. Um, and so then I started learning about like syndicating and RSS feeds and all this stuff. And I was like, oh, this is a little deeper than I thought it was, but okay. So I got it set up with Buzzsprout and they're the, they're the ones that syndicate our podcast. And I picked Buzzsprout cause I was like, oh, Sprout, which is nature sounds cute. And it was affordable. So I picked that one. Um, and so the first two days that I had these up on Buzzsprout and I think we were only syndicating to Spotify and uh, Google podcasts at the time first 30 days or the first seven days that it was up zero downloads which i'm like okay yeah that's fine that's fair it's a no-name podcast and then the first 30 days there were two and i was like oh two two downloads that's cool mm-hmm. and then here's where the jump is super cool to me in the first 90 days of episode one being posted 97 downloads 
Wow. So it kind of took off. Like we we were reaching people pretty quickly and from the get go, which I think is really cool. Um, and now our our all time <laughs> for episode one is nine hundred ninety three. We're almost at a thousand oh. downloads <laughs> for episode one, which uh, is really cool. But I mean, the the first episode on a podcast is usually the most viewed or the most listened to because you know everyone mm-hmm. wants to start at one. Um, but yeah, I just thought that was really cool. Um, but thinking back to those to those early days of it, I kind of miss the sitting in the kitchen feel, and I kind of wish we could still do that. But obviously, with having like um, our our Canadian correspondent, <laughs> it doesn't exactly work that way. <laughs> but I do miss those days. I, I one day, up. one day we'll be all in a kitchen. That would be great, and I, I actually really hope we get to achieve that. Like, I hope whether we come visit you or you come visit us, however it works out. I hope Ideally, that... you come here. I don't want to go to the states. Fuck that shit. Yeah, well, <laughs> maybe in a couple of years it'll go go a little better over here. <laughs> Hopefully, when when we're uh, you, under you new said management. That last year. <laughs> well, Trump was still president. Um. But hopefully we'll be under new management soon. Um, but I, I, I do miss it. But I never thought that um, this little podcast that we started in a kitchen have so strong of like a following for us not putting much into it in terms of yeah. promoting it. Yeah. I mean, for me, it was always like, I loved seeing all the people that were saying like, thank you, you know, you, you, we, you know, helping them in some emotional way, you know, that was always really nice. Mm -hmm. You know, I like to see, that's what I always wanted, right? I mean, the outreach and, and uh, making friendships and things, but to help people that felt really nice, you know, to bring people some kind of comfort. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, and then on top of that, for me, there was a huge change. Like, I mean, if it wasn't for this podcast, I don't think, you know, being as gender apathetic as I've realized I am, I would have never realized any of that. You know what I mean? Mm. Um, I would have never realized, hey, I don't really identify with the guy thing and it never made much sense. What does this mean? And, it, you know, and then on top of that through researching what that meant, I found something called gender apathy, which just is like, I don't, I literally don't care about gender. Like Mm -hmm. it's to to me, it's like a non thing. You know what I mean? Doesn't exist in your, right. Uh, Which is, I I didn't even, I didn't even know that was an option. Like I didn't, I didn't even know that about myself. So like, I mean, the podcast changed me, you know? I feel and like it, I think. Okay. Hmm? No, go ahead. Oh no, I just I think that that that, that just speaks to the kind of I don't know the power of of whatever this 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 passion project you know has you know. Mm-hmm. Um. Did you want to say something, Sophie? Well, I mean, go ahead. Um. No, I just uh. I I find it, I wanted to do this episode so badly because we hadn't really acknowledged our own progress or success. We haven't really done much to acknowledge that, and I wanted to, and now that we're recording this, I'm finding it difficult because I'm like, I feel like we're going to do more. We can do more. Like we can do so much more Always. different and cooler things, you know, but, but these numbers just strive, like they just inspire me to do more, not like in a bad way. Like we're failing, but like we're succeeding. And think about this. We're yeah. going to be back here at episode a hundred, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we're going to be looking at, at where we've gone and how much we've grown as a community and going, <sighs> what a fucking ride you know and i i do love all the messages that we get from people we don't get many um and i don't know if some are hiding somewhere in some obscure inbox that i've seen because sometimes it happens sometimes i feel like a boomer when it comes to the fucking social media (laughs) because i'm like oh that exists 
queer people love to be shy and witches love to be hermits you get queer witches and you are like fucking live in a van by the river type person you are happy with that that is like bliss to you so like yeah i'm pretty sure most of our uh, listeners are just so happy to not reach out and just send us their love non-verbally you know and and i i feel it i i i get it when like those episode numbers are going up i'm like damn y'all are fucking loving this you know yeah and I kind of, I really get that vibe. I get the vibe that we have a very uh, strong, silent community, right? So mm-hmm. before, because like I said earlier, I, I don't check these numbers frequently. I hop in from time to time. Usually I look at them when Buzzsprout sends me an email. Like, oh, you reached 100 views or you did that, you know, like some automated milestone thing. And I'm like, oh, really? Um but I don't really keep up on the numbers. And so I initially was kind of basing our success off of our social media interaction, which is actually quite low. Mm -hmm. We don't get a ton of messages. They're very few and far between. And so I was like, Oh man, like we must have like six people listening to us, (laughs) you know? And, um, and then, so I started to really look into the numbers and I was like, Oh, holy shit. Wait, hold on. (laughs) This is kind (laughs) of, it's kind of a lot. What's up here. Mm -hmm. So, um, I I think I would agree with you there, Sophia. I think I just, uh, I think I was basing on, I was, I was basing the, our type of community based off of like other, I guess your, your standard influencer community package, right? Like Mm -hmm. a very talkative, chatty kind of community, but I think our community just likes to absorb and that's great too, because that's how I consume most of my media. Like for anyone that I follow. Yeah. Yeah. I was just going to say, you got to know your audience, right? Not Mm -hmm. everybody wants to, like, reach out and be super talkative and jump into the Facebook group. That's why, like, we didn't necessarily push, like, Facebook group or Discord after people weren't that interested in it. And, like, if that's kind of how the community is and y'all just, like, chilling out and doing your stuff and, like, it is what it is, that's great. We're just happy to have you, you know? Yeah. Which kind of makes me wonder if, like, uh, like how much we should do with the Discord and, and Facebook group. I'm not really sure what I, lies in I the future that for that. I think leaving the Discord open is wonderful. We're always going to be using it for recording no matter what. Yeah, if people want to come find us and hang out here, that's great. We'll have, like, chat rooms that people can chat in that's, like, non privacy locked. And it'll always be here. The Facebook group, if it dies, it dies. You know? That's just how it goes. Yeah. I gotta. Uh, I kind of want to post a couple more things in there. I'm just not really sure what to do there because, like I said, y'all seem like the the strong so silent type. Facebook's dying, though. I'm just gonna say this: M- millennials. We just kind of said fuck Facebook. The boomers took it over with COVID. We're done with like the social media drama. And if we want that, we're gonna get it off Twitter. The fuck are we on Facebook for? Make sure <laughs> our family true. knows what's up and to like post gradual updates for your distant friends to like know what's going on in your life so that they're like oh cool she's not dead nice like that's what facebook's for it's yeah. not it's not meant to be like an engaging form anymore and then like direct messenger through facebook's still a big thing mm-hmm. but other than that fuck it yeah right? I've, I've honestly realized shit about it there are two things i use facebook for it's for messenger because i use mm-hmm. that a lot and i use it for the various groups that i'm in like because like our all our pagan pride organizational stuff is through a facebook group and that's really it yeah and i scroll through posts and i post occasionally mm-hmm. but like i'm not like yeah it's only facebook. good for groups and messenger anymore yeah pretty much yeah it's pretty much just become like a um like a like a project management <laughs> it's, it's like a slack channel or something like that <laughs> Pretty can, much, like, yeah. And, and, and Zuckerberg over there is like, "How do we become cool again?" And everyone's like, "You can't." You know how you become it. cool we again? You now bring back MySpace because MySpace was cool as fuck. I loved MySpace. <laughs> God and like Angel Fire and the shitty like GeoCities. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Like, but I was thinking, like, the websites that, like, autoplay music when you get yeah. there for the first time, and you're like, no, no, and you have to turn it off because it's, like, playing at the same time as your music and you're getting overstimulated. I just loved looking at those early witchy websites with, like, the spinning pentagrams on fire. Ugh. It's little gifts. It of, says, like... blessed be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
I love how many times we have mentioned that on this podcast. Like, they're, they're, we have such a um, nostalgia thing. I feel like we should all. This such is such early millennials. I know. I feel yeah. like we should all get like matching tattoos of like a pixelated pentagram <laughs> with fire around it. I don't know. <laughs> My tattoos are very. How, how do I say? Vogue. Um, or we just get like um a sheet of like uh stickers. <laughs> That's just like the spinny, fiery, pixelated. Uh, that works too. <laughs> cool. I ain't against wearing stick. Actually, yeah, that could be like one of our logos is like a pixelated pentagram. That would actually be really cool. You get a, like a little uh, animated uh GIF of it, or mm-hmm. is it GIF or GIF? I don't know. I say GIF. GIF. I say GIF. GIF. Okay. I don't, I don't know don't hate me internet I'm, I'm a fucking dumb millennial i was born before they were made you can you can complain all you want you were born after it so like whatever <laughs> that was before my time back in my day we didn't have no oh is that lawrence has lawrence come back no that's that's uh that's the bootstrap and boomer <laughs> Ah, the bootstrap boomer. <laughs> yes. Love it. God, no, I'm not a voice actor, but you're going to get all these voice acting personalities out of me. There's like, there's like Hillbilly, there's Bootstrap and Boomer, and there's Lawrence. <laughs> there was a breakdown. I'm trying to find it. There was a breakdown that oh, I there's saw. Gertrude. Oh, it was on. Uh... Oh, there's Gertrude. Ooh, I like Gertrude. Gertrude's cool. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So Spotify, Spotify actually has a breakdown of our audience. Um, so, oh wow, so this actually totally shifted. Interesting. So, um, Spotify has a breakdown of our of our audience. Um, it goes. Let's see. So the, our gender breakdown, if anyone is curious, um, is fifty six percent female. 15% male and 29% non-binary. Yay. Yeah, so yeah. If, as a queer witchcraft podcast, we have more non-binary people <laughs> than men <laughs> listening to us, which is actually pretty great. <laughs> I'm 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 cool with that. Um I like oh, to yeah. see Oh, I'm I'm the I, I'm curious why the the female number is so high. I guess a lot of men don't get as into witchcraft or is it the queer thing i'm not really sure i'm not really sure why that is um and then it also breaks it down by age so the other day when i looked at this the the zero to 17 category was like four percent um but now it's it's zero percent, so <laughs> we don't have any kids really listening to us like kids, kids. Cool. Um, so thank God. And cool. uh, yeah, really for you, anyways. No boomers or yeah, really no boomers either, which also good, I guess. I don't know. There's cool boomers out there. No. I know there's a couple of them out there. Um. But primarily, our primary age gap is 28 to 34, as 46% of our listeners sense. are 28 to 34 years old. So us, essentially. Yeah, our age. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which is cool. Um, and then 21% 18 to 22, 21% 23 to 27, and 13% 35 to 40. So we really range from 18 to 44, which is really, that's in our wheelhouse. That makes sense. Makes a lot of mm-hmm. sense for us. Mm-hmm. Um, we got the cool Gen X, we got the good Gen Z, we got a whole bunch of millennials, you know, we're right in the good middle there. Yeah, I really I really like it, and I think that's why our our numbers just keep going up, because, um, you know, people keep talking about us, they're like, hey, this is cool, like, I vibe with this shit that these people talk about, and you would or too. we're hitting the algorithms, you know, and like, that, it's yeah. like putting us up on recommendations to people, because I know that's something that'll happen when, like, you hit a certain amount, is it'll start showing up as, like, things you might like and if you're if you're a podcast that hasn't even broken like 2000 downloads you're not necessarily as likely to get shared as one that's like starting to uptick on the trending and like hit those recommendations right mhm exactly mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Um, so are you guys curious about our top episodes of time? Yeah, give her. Uh, yeah. So, um... Okay, well, our top episode is the first one. And that's just because people click it a lot. Uh, but... Let me get out of the ones that are not in succession. One, two, three, four. I'm going to take out the first four, because I feel like people will probably just listen to that in succession, right? Yeah. Um... Yeah, okay, here's where it starts to make sense. So I actually passed episode seven, right? So it would be episode ten, The Witch Blood. That is our, I would say, our most popular episode. Wow. Yeah. Um. Not the numbers don't say it's the most popular, but I'm saying it's the most popular just because it's, like it's the, not right in the succession. Right before I joined the podcast, isn't it? I think yeah, it was because um. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was very, very, very soon before you joined. Or were you here already? I can't. Yeah, remember. they were like, "Fuck this bitch, get out of here!" I hate this <laughs> podcast now that she's in it. What's uh really cool is our second most popular episode is the DKMU episode. So episode twenty six, modern occultism, mm-hmm. nice. DKMU, and the God forms. Um, third most popular, what makes a witch? And that was the interview that I did with Linnea. Uh, Linnea B. Caps. She's a, a oh really? Yes, she's a she's a queer author in the furry community, and she wrote this really cool fiction book, um, about this trans character discovering witchcraft, and it that's fucking awesome. Yeah, it's a it's a really nice little novella. Um, uh, it's it's really great. I I recommend the book. It's it's incredible. It's a really easy read too. So it's a it's not it's not a huge commitment. Um, I should go back and listen to that episode too because, like, I, as somebody who is in a podcast, I can't bear to listen to my voice, <laughs> you know, and I yeah. don't listen to our podcast whatsoever. So it's hard I guess editing. I should go it. back and listen to it. Yeah, it's hard editing. Believe it or not, there's science behind that. The reason why we don't like yeah. to hear our own voices. Mm. Well, I have to hear it every time I edit. I'm like, oh god, why? <laughs> <laughs> it's a real good practice and like getting used to the uncomfortable sensation of like hearing your own shit to be fair i mean by this point i've i've just gotten used to it so i think the more you expose yourself to your own voice the more you get used to it All right so that was number three here's number I'll, I'll do top five uh so number four was witchcraft and pop culture chilling adventures of sabrina seasons two and three for our discussion on that and then the next one was episode 11 scary magical moments number five Ooh. Mm spooky so y'all like the dark shit is what i'm feeling the witch blood Mm -hmm. modern occultism they're like fuck this hope stuff we don't care about your (laughs) witchcraft as a witchcraft as a religion episode give us the grit well you're gonna like the death episode then (laughs) yeah the death episode episode, that episode did like i said that episode caused a lot of conversation elsewhere Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so i mean you know the death Either episode. Either controversial or we're downloaded. <laughs> mm, well, did we post the death episode? No, that that's in no, the that's going to be next. Yeah, yeah, that's in the queue. Um, our least popular episode is New Beginnings, and that was really just a like a we had taken a long yeah. break, and we had just started getting into it. Um, so. We yeah. were talking about a bunch of things we wanted to do, and they were like, yeah, fuck Actually, people. you know Let's what? Content. Our least listen... No, you guys really do like the dark shit, because our least listened to episodes, okay? Here's the ones at the bottom of the list. I'm not going to count The Power of Celebration, because that one just came out and hasn't really had time to, to ramp, but Rainbow Capitalism, Self-Care, and 2019 Goals, How Do You Navigate the Muddy Waters of Witch and Queer Communities, how do you handle multiple responsibilities? Uh, the Yule episode, Spirit of the Season. So I'm like, wow, you guys really don't care for the um, for the lighthearted topics too much. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, which is fine. Yeah. I just thought it was funny. That's all. I was just laughing about. It, it, is, it is interesting, <laughs> but it's telling. Yeah. It is telling. I get it. Y'all are some dark, edgy motherfuckers just like us. It's all good. Right. 
Yeah, I, I feel that. I mean, I always I tend to to favor, um, you know, episodes like that too when I listen to podcasts. So it makes sense to me. Yeah, I'm also like I, I was saying to D- um, Darian the other day. I was like, I'm a very serious person, like in general. Like, I'm not like big on comedy or. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. Like, I love like resolution and like a, a nice happy ending kind of thing. Mm-hmm. But in general, like when I t- when I have a conversation, you know, like I like when the conversation gets heavy and I don't know. Yeah, I don't like um, light idle conversation. I've Friends always said to me your woes. <laughs> exactly i've never been into things like small talk like i don't like small talk um i can't just like hold a conversation just for the sake of holding a conversation like we gotta really be talking about something or i'm i'm not interested (laughs) i've never i've never met a witch a mystic a practitioner who actually can that almost Hmm. seems like a witch thing or a magic thing, or it's, a spiritual thing. It's almost like, you just there's just a lot of better things I can be doing with my time. Like, if I want to have, like, a uh, laugh around thing, I'm going to, like, go load up a game and play with my friends. Right. I'm not going to, like, do it with, like, random people coming by and doing small talk, but, like, you tell me about, like, your mom dying, and I'm happy to, like, sit down and, like, provide emotional care for you in that time where you need it, right? Yeah, literally, like, even, like, um... Like at my at my job, I get clients that call, and it's a personal injury firm. So a lot of them are like, you know, I'm in pain and things hurt, and you know, and sometimes, sometimes it's just people be, like, okay, you're you you had a bruised foot, and okay, you'll you're still not hurt, but okay, fine. Um, sometimes it's like that, and you can tell they're kind of like milking it for what it's worth. It's like you don't have to plead your case to me. You have, like you don't have to prove anything to me. I work for right. you. Um, but sometimes I feel the need to play it up. But then there's the people that are legitimately like, I can't do the things that I used to anymore, and I just want justice, some kind of compensation and resolution for this bullshit. And those are the people that I, I feel for, you know, and I really and I actually have like okay conversations with for the couple minutes I'm on the phone with them about whatever. And so, yeah, I kind of feel that too. Like I could not know someone, like I could just meet someone and I would, I think I'd much rather talk about their, I don't know, maybe traumatic things in their life as opposed to like, how about them Eagles or, you know, football? I'm like, oh God, no. (laughs) Hard pass. Yep. I agree. I really do. (laughs) No, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just, you know, I agree with that completely. You know, like, I've never been comfortable with small talk, you know? Uh Uh-huh. And then I just get really awkward, (laughs) at least for me. You know, like, when I'm forced into small talk, eventually I get nervous. Because then I don't know what else to say. Me too. And then there are times where, like, I've been like, you know what, let's just, like, take the leap. Let's see if maybe I can make them go deeper. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of, it's been a hit or a miss. It's always a hit or a miss. There's never an in-between. You know, I've had people kind of, like, completely shut down, you know? Mm -hmm. And maybe get, like, a little offended because if they felt it, like, it was intrusive somehow, Mm -hmm. you know? So, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I have such a... I also have such an an issue, like, with in-person conversations, too. Like, this podcast is great, because, it's one, it's only three of us, so it's it's easier to manage. Like, you know, sometimes we cut in or, oh, I'm sorry, or, you know, you go. But, like, we're pretty um, aware of what we're saying and when, right? But, like, when my friends come over on Saturday, like, literally, that door opens, and they pile in, and they're like, Jay, look, Jay, ha- hey, hey, Jay, it's like... It's like having kids. It's really fucking bizarre. <laughs> it's really fucking bizarre. And the only one who really doesn't do that is Rick because he's the he's an adult and acts like an adult. <laughs> he's the, he's very quiet. He's a very strong, silent type. Um, 
and and sometimes I just look at him like through this chaos of like all these different people like hey look at this hey 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 and I just look at him and he just shakes his head <laughs> I just I'm like save me you fucker uh, uh, <laughs> he's like nope <laughs> I'm like uh, damn it <laughs> that's very rick it is there's very some rick. friends who are like who are almost like dogs they're like jack russell terriers and they're very excitable and they need your attention and your love and your care and oh my god if you don't pay attention they're gonna die mm-hmm. some people are over there just like yeah man yep like i definitely have a very wide group of friends like sometimes i just need like katie is definitely the friend like we can sit in complete silence and just chill <laughs> Like, we don't have to say anything to each other. It has to join one between day, each other. Pretty should, much, like, we yeah. Have, we should have Katie on one day. That would be I'd fun. love that, yeah. That would be really she's fun. she's a Satanist and get her to talk about what she believes and all that shit. She's also studying um, ceremonial high magic, too. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Mm-hmm. And she's a near and dear friend who we've mentioned of seven billion times on the podcast. So it's almost like yeah, she's basically due yeah. time for her to get her ass on here. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, Katie's been in my life since I was five years old, so she's mm-hmm. she's been around for everything. Um, I'm curious how long this podcast will be around. See, like when I think about it now, I. I really don't see an end point. Like I kind of see it as something that I will just continue to do. Like it's just become something that's almost a habit or just a thing that I do. It's like a feature in my life. Yeah. You know, like it's it's like like I I just kind of know that I'll I'll I will one day wake up to be it's episode um 158. You know, it's uh-huh. episode. 230 you know like i'm just kind of prepared for that i don't yeah. know like it's, it's gonna happen yeah could you imagine us te- like podcasting in 10 fucking years from now and i'm like over here after we like survive like the borderline collapse of society with like a million tattoos on us and we're like <laughs> look like the epic level character versions of ourselves and we're just like yeah, with that witchcraft day. We've <laughs> talked a lot about it. We're real good at it now. Nobody fucks with us, you know. We we killed the bad president with the magic. We overthrew like the government that was like oppressing us. We got like space utopia and and like space for queers now and and nobody's racist anymore and we beat all the badness in the world and it's just great. You know, and like that'll be ten years from now, hopefully. Yeah, and I feel like we all smoke cigars at that point because we've just <laughs> given up <laughs> cigars and whiskey just all day. Oh, <laughs> uh, now I'm just picturing myself, um, Practical Magic in the very beginning. You know, when the lady comes knocking on the door and she's like, "He has to leave his wife. He has to leave her now." And I just picture me like wearing a muumu, smoking a like a cigar. <laughs> no scott for you you know what i picture in my garden (laughs) you know what i picture for you a a cruella de vil length cigarette holder oh my god yeah and like uh the similar outfit with like the fur thing around the neck (laughs) scarf but it's like faux because scott likes animals and doesn't (laughs) want any unethical treatment of of their babies (laughs) yes Unless, of course, that animal was, you know, eaten and you mean everything, you know, used and stuff. That would be that would be fine. Yeah, yes. mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah fur ain't murder if it's done by indigenous people. Don't be don't be hating on the people whose lands y'all took and telling us, hey, you shouldn't eat meat, or hey, you shouldn't wear fur, because like that's different... grounds for a beaten. That's grounds a... for a beaten. There's a difference between hunting for sport and hunting for survival and and culture yeah nine times out of ten if you're hunting for culture like native people do tradition the animal is used to the fat the skin sustenance everything it's food it's food like the the deer hide gets used the bones become a tool like uh, everything they uh, and and other stuff gets used to like get put into to like outfits and regalia and it's it's fucking incredibly respectful and they only take like the proper amounts and they like actually honor the spirit of the animal after they like hunt it like there's mm-hmm. there's so so fucking much that goes on and they're like putting down tobacco after a, after a kill and stuff and depending on the area 
area and their tradition, right? And it's like a lot fucking different than Johnny Two Two Shoes who goes out there and shoots a buck for a trophy, right? Yep. Yeah, and then just stands there next to this dead animal and then does yeah. like a picture or gets it. Like my brother, stuffed. my brother killed an elk this uh this fall. You know what he did with that elk? Mm. Fucking filled a whole deep freeze. That's what he did. Good. I've had mm-hmm. elk before. Mm-hmm. Elk is so delicious. Yeah, and he so he ain't bad. um eating some cow that's been hormone fed and like stuck in a pen and unethically treated and like deprived of its children. He just went out and shot an elk that like died a peaceful death and didn't see anything bad coming, and then boop, it's on to the next world, and that's that, you know. And fucking, he gets good eatings, right? Mm-hmm. Like. And even if somebody's not doing it in, like, the full traditional style, like, because, let's be real, a lot of Indigenous people don't necessarily have all their traditions. A lot of us are like me, and you're completely fucking divorced from it, and you're trying to learn as an adult. Like, that's okay. That's the reality of it for a lot of people, right? But it's still okay and ethical, you know? It doesn't make it a bad thing. Yeah, totally. Same goes for animal sacrifice, by the way. I'm going to bong poke now. Toke. What I also found interesting, um, so looking at our, looking at our audience review and like the locations. So we have people that listen to us around the world. Now I will say the majority of this comes from, um, North America. It's very... It, most of our audience is in the US, followed by Canada. Um, but the majority, like 75% of our listeners are in the US. Mm-hmm. Um, but we do have some people in Europe, Africa, South America, Asia, and down in Australia, which I thought was pretty That's damn cool. So cool. Right? <laughs> yeah, I thought that was really cool. I was like, oh, damn. Much love to the international crowd. Yeah, absolutely. I hope I hope y'all can deal with our heavy Philly accents. Heavy, I don't know. I don't know. Do you have a heavy Canadian accent, Sophia? I have no idea. I have a heavy like that. um. It well, like it depends. My accent shifts, but sometimes I talk really native, and you wouldn't notice it. Um, it's it's an unconscious thing that I have almost no control over as an autistic person. But I code switch to talk uh, similar to the people I'm with. So when I'm in like a podcast setting like this, I talk this way. When I'm around more like my native friends, I'll have a different way that I'll talk and I'll use like different uh, like lingo and everything. It's completely different based on who I'm with, honestly. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I kind of feel that too. I, th- I feel like for the podcast, I really try not to let my, my Philly slip through too hard, but sometimes I fail on that <laughs> epically. It's not like I'm screaming out here, hey, bud, how's it going? You know? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, most Philly lingo, I don't even. John. I'll I don't tell think you I've this, ever though. used the word John like, um... a day in my life. No, I mean, I don't. <laughs> My Métis accent comes through a lot with, like, the, you know, when I'm always, like, saying, uh, when I finish up stuff, I'm like, oh, you know, or something we, like that. That's, uh, very all, native. We all say, you know. Because when I'm <laughs> editing, I can't edit them all out. I can't. Like, it'll don't, be like... Don't! No, no, it's it would be impossible to. There would be no podcast, honestly, <laughs> if I edited I them. I about the joy... <laughs> Of the podcast is that we're all very much each our own characters, right? Like, I'm this rambunctious, high-energy, outspoken weirdo who's also, like, loving and caring and, like, has some cool insight. And Scott's, like, this lovable bear who's always kind and a little bit shy, but always has, like, this care and love to give and, like... A wonderful perspective and some good knowledge but like you cross scott and scott will like death hex a bitch with a coffin <laughs> nail and just fucking just be like mm, well maybe you shouldn't have done something like that you know and jay over here is like hey 
I'm the professional, you know, like <laughs> type A. I'm going to get this shit done. I'm over here. I'm like the cool guy. I'm definitely like the main character on an anime. Like I'm the shonen. I put this stuff together. Like <laughs> this wouldn't even happen without me. I got my sunglasses. I got my nice crew cut. I got like uh, I do my, like my sunglasses. suit and like my uh, eight witch rings that I wear, you know. Um, I do. So I drive rings. a cool car. <laughs> I drive a cool car. I can punch uh, demons in the face because I, my my rings are actually sanctified and I'm like over here talking to spirits and like throwing throwing uh, black salt over the shoulder you know we're very much like these high energy personalities you know yeah I, d- I definitely think we do fit into I guess sort of like character archetypes which by the way if anyone is artistic and is like on the oh, fence if God. y'all wanted to draw us as like <laughs> D&D characters or anime characters I'm all for it so, please, yeah. if you're ever bored and the spirit moves you in such a direction, show me, <laughs> because I need that. What I would look like. That's how I know we've character. made it. If we, the day we receive fan art is the day that we've made. It. <laughs> yeah, I want to see us done up as char- as like cartoon characters now. You know, that'd be cool as shit. That'd be actually really cool. I was actually like going to witch trio. I was going to commission a friend of mine to do something like that, actually. Oh, so if you are interested in that, I, also, I could make that happen. That reminds me, we have commissioned a new um, opening for yes, the podcast. Yes, we do mm-hmm. have new things coming. Um, we're we've commissioned a yeah a new intro, an outro, or do we? Yep. Yeah, we did. You okay. mentioned it in the thing. You said it was a minute's worth of stuff. Oh, okay. For okay. an outro with natural fade. Okay. I just got like so worried there that I we only talked about an intro. <laughs> Ooh, the, the my friend. My friend. Was <laughs> yes. <laughs> you you were in a room with autistic people selling the idea to an autistic person. No, we will certainly have you covered. Okay, good. Um So uh yes, yeah, so we have new intro music coming from um, Sophia Brand. Ahava Ein Sof. Yes. And his musical project, Nis. Right. Namasani. Namasani. I keep wanting to say Nisamani, and I just keep it's, flipping the letters it's around. It's a tongue twister, and, and Ahava did not come up with that name. It's um a Greek goddess of inspiration. Hmm. So, yeah. um,. So yeah, that that's going to be coming soon. I'm actually really excited for that. It's going to be oh, yeah. going to be some extra pizzazz. Actually, now that we're yeah, talking about that, yeah, if you're interested, um, check out Immaterium by Namosini on YouTube. We'll link it in the show notes as yeah. a little teaser as some work done by this artist. Yeah, well, we'll <sighs> I'll definitely drop that in. Um, shit, was I gonna say? Oh yeah. So now that we're kind of talking about like um things that we're doing, things that are in the works, I'm actually kind of curious, like what sort of things do we want to do in the future for the podcast, for the website, mm. or you know, like what sort of things? When COVID's done, I want to meet up IRL with a bunch of people. I want to like, if we can, have like a thing where people could come and talk to us. Maybe we they could like pick our brains about shit like i actually want to get out and talk to people so i'm gonna like put the i'm gonna say maybe we take a moment here to talk about what we want to do in the next few years with our personal lives and how that links into the podcast because i think that's going to be really relevant so uh i have been i started a gofundme for uh which wise which is uh been my handle on tumblr and instagram for a while now and what i really want to start doing um is kind of becoming a really taking up the mantle of like village wise person like i really want to be that person that someone comes to and it's like hey you know my bed is picking up and levitating and i'm getting scratches and mysterious burns appear out of nowhere i need help and i want to be able to be like go there and be like you know this house is clean you know what i mean Mm -hmm. um i also like want to like you know read for people and i I, like i just want to bring my services to people um so i started to go fund me so i can get my llc and my ein number so i could get wholesale accounts 
And uh, so I'm going to be doing that. I'm still going to be going to school. That's still going to be a thing happening. I just have to kind of get out of my own way emotionally. That's deeper stuff that I won't get into, but that's also still going to happen. Um, but the big thing right now is kind of the, the, the witch wise thing. However, witch wise has always been, and will always be connected, um, to witches betwixt. I'll still be selling product. Um, even though witch wise won't kind of be like a shop, it's more going to be a service, but I will be selling kind of, um, product through witches betwixt, um, doing candles and oils and stuff like that which will pretty much be the same kind of stuff that I use for my clients, but it'll just be for, you know, the general people to purchase, the, our audience to purchase and use for their own magic. Yeah, which was, it's kind of, uh, it's kind of like your product line, the product line that you've created, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which will be really cool. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm excited about it. I really am. I am too, because that's also something that I wanted to start working on. I have a couple ideas uh, that I'm currently working on for uh, divination systems that are not just tr traditional um, tarot, not traditional arrow or card based or whatever. Um, I've actually, so I, I've created one that I've kind of like showed you guys some pictures of, sort of like a prototype. I call them like the. Just in my head, I was like a like the the modern witches runes. They were all symbols that we recognize um, like as as modern day people, right? So like plus sign, minus sign, happy face, smiley face, um, little symbol for like knife for cauldron and stuff like that. So very simple um, things that I was kind of playing around with. Um, and then there's another system that I'm kind of working on too, based off of um polyhedral dice that you know just like you would like a set of polyhedral dice that you would play like D, D with um and my friend rick actually he tipped me off and because i was talking to him about it and he was like did you know about the platonic solids and how they are basically oh, yeah. polyhedral dice and i was like i don't know i'm not really into like <laughs> Like geometry always scared me and hurt my brain, so I always I'm kinda, a geometry nerd. I kind of shy away from those things. Um, and I was like, if you can find me an article that like simplifies it, you know, and not like all that mathematical jargony stuff, like I would love to read that. And so I started. I've been reading a lot more into the Platonic solids and what they represent and i'm like well how could i create a divination system on each face of each of these dice so it's like a whole process i got this whole brainchild thing going on which eventually is something that i do want to refine and develop into a product that i want to sell um and get out to the people you and I should have a long chat about that because I've spent like a good amount of time working with the platonic solids as a magical construct and mm -hmm. um, associating uh, individual elements to each one of them. So there's a lot I can talk to about. Talk yeah, because to about, like, the little uh, the, things on that. Yeah, because the platonic solids they do represent um the elements yeah so fuck i'll go into it right now so like for example the d6 is a square it's earth it's like totally mm -hmm. a cube um the icosahedron which is a d20 unless i'm incorrect it's water it's the closest to a circle which looks like a droplet right mm -hmm. um the d12 which is uh, a dodecahedron is representative of spirit i don't know why um, the D8 is representative of, of wind because it's um, sharp and edgy and it's the easiest to fly through the air for its aerodynamics. Um, God, what were the other ones? What am I missing? Fire, right? Fire is the D4 because it like literally is the same shape that fire makes. Mm -hmm. um, the D10 is not a platonic solid, though. The, the D10 is not a platonic, platonic solid. It's something that they added in for the sake of making a 10-sided die for the game. The big thing that the D10, I think, was actually added for was making a percentile. When you add the two of them together, uh -huh. you can roll for any variable between 1 to 100. Yeah. So, that's the thing. Um, um, but in my... Yeah, I think that's all of them. Yeah, but in the divination system I'm kind of creating, like, it's based off of those platonic solids, but I was like, I really do still want to incorporate the D10. Um, because... I think 
because I'm kind of I was kind of approaching it from like a, a modern chance. point of view. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Like fate or chance or yeah. you know something uh-huh. like that. Like the uh-huh. uh, you got to have the unknown variable. You, just like Ooh, every deck of luck or that. Um, because just like a deck of cards has a joker. Like you need a joker. Mm-hmm. You know, so. That's uh that's something that I'm developing and um I also have a lot of snake shed that I could offer to people. Um you know, I have that in in large supply. I also do my own powdered egg shell. So if I, that's another thing that I'd like to start selling and What do we use powdered egg shell for, by the way? Somebody sent me some and I'm like, "Oh my god, I'm a I don't use this in my tradition. What's this for?" Um, it's usually like protection banishing is how I depending on the tradition. Mm-hmm. It's uh, it's really good stuff. It's also good for your garden too. Extra extra calcium. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so that's just like you know, um, stuff that I want to work on. So there's products and things that I want to work on, and I also really have a lot of plans to. Uh, I want to create a a grimoire section on our website Ooh. in which yeah I, i'm into that too yeah i really want to create a grimoire section but not just in the sense of like us just feeding you guys information i would mm-hmm. like to open this as like a community driven um thing as well so if you if you know if people want to submit to the grimoire they can easily do so i'm gonna create a system that will allow people to easily submit things to the grimoire and also um a community driven blog is something that um we want to implement because uh we were we were discussing the idea of having a blog and wishing like we write a post Sophia writes a post Scott writes a post but we've all got a lot of shit going on and i don't want this to sound like a cop out like honestly we we have about as much energy to, like you're lucky we get the podcast out. <laughs> Y'all are lucky we record and Honestly, get this Honestly, I'm going to say this. It's surprising that with how much the world's falling apart, we have managed to just be, like, irredeemably consistent. You know? Yeah. Like, come hell or high water, we are still just fucking out here recording, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think that's really, it's really important um for us to keep doing that because i think it helps us retain some sense of stability and normalcy and regularity uh which i really i like um but i want to i want to open up to the community more and it's like we were saying earlier okay maybe you guys aren't the the chatty type and that's fine because honestly i also suck at small talk so i don't know how i'd hold you know like small happy honestly even when people are like hey i love your podcast like i don't even know what to say i'm just like okay (laughs) like thank you (laughs) okay thanks socially (laughs) awkward yeah (laughs) okay (laughs) okay like that that meme i forget i think i forget what it was it's just like it's like some i think it's a guy with like an african accent or something he's just like okay or like whatever he says she says how are you yeah yeah (laughs) she says how are you and he says okay (laughs) that's me (laughs) (laughs) um so yeah um actually yeah that's probably better that you guys don't talk to us all that much because i don't know what i'd say back to you other than okay thanks um (laughs) <laughs> and if you do, I'm here to be like a chatterbox and be like, yeah, Sophia is definitely. Like, I'm better at unless it you're too, like I one of the talk. creeps. Yeah, yeah, I... yeah. And we we do get some occasional creeps who'll be like, ah, and I'll just be like, I'm just gonna politely ignore you. Oh yeah, yeah. If if uh, we don't uh, we don't accidentally ghost people, we intentionally ghost people. <laughs> if it gets <laughs> oh, weird. <yeah. laughs> So if we've ghosted you, it was Unless intentional. Unless it's accidental, then I'll apologize, which I sure as fuck will apologize for. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, there's there's a lot that we want to do with this podcast. But yeah, I really wanted to, uh, you know, open this up to the community, the idea of a blog and a grimoire, because we want this podcast to bring the community together. And sometimes people communicate better through a spell they submitted or maybe just like a blog post that they wrote about a particular topic. Mm-hmm. Um, and in a way that's still like mm-hmm. you talking to us, but it's also you talking to the whole of the community. And so that's something that we really uh, want to do. 
And that, fuck, if that, that takes off, like, we can get people to send in art. Like, it doesn't have to just be, like, written stuff. Like, mm-hmm. if you, um, if you like drawings and stuff. One thing I love about, like, Critical Role back when I watched it prior to my breakup, um, like, how they'd always have the fan art being, skirt, like, streamed constantly during the break and stuff. Like, oh, that's cool. that just warms my heart. Like, any content that y'all put up that's, like, good, we would just love the feature. And if you don't want to do that, that's fucking cool too like don't feel pressured to and also there's a really good chance like you know with whatever uh posts or articles that you submit about particular topics it very may well become something that we quote or highlight in an episode about a particular topic Mm -hmm. you know we might be like oh hey so and so actually submitted this article about this particular thing that's super relevant to what we're talking about Mm -hmm. so you know it's um it's a cool it's a it's a cool way to get involved without the commitment yeah. of a conversation <laughs> which uh, and we're like super down to interview people who have something cool to say so like too. not to say that like you have to write us an essay to to potentially be interviewed on the podcast but like if you do and you have something really cool to say you know we're probably gonna be like hey can we like get you on we want to pick your brain about this in a in a public setting and like get some ideas out of you you know yeah. Like we want to we want to talk to you. We want to hear from you. And if it, again, I will say, if you don't want to talk to us back, that's great, and I understand. And I'm over here to just keep talking off into the void every week because that's what we do, you know. Mm-hmm. I think we do a good job. I, I think I think we're effective at at holding space. Yeah. For our community, you know, like the numbers show that people are listening. So we we see you like we see those numbers we see that you're listening and so we're gonna keep doing what we're doing and we're going Mm -hmm. to you know unveil these new things i'm not saying everything's gonna happen at once it's probably gonna be one small thing at a time because that's really i think the only thing that we can kind of manage energy wise but it'll be one small thing at a time and i think it's gonna i think it's gonna grow our community in a really healthy just beautiful and open kind of way i think like our community is going to be a lot different from other podcast followings i think it's not going to be as social media focused and it's going to be more like community content focused yeah Mm -hmm. it's almost like you know like honest hmm. I don't want to be some untouchable witch celebrity, you know? No. I don't want to be that person who's like, <laughs> I'm too good to show up in public. I'm not throwing shade at anybody in that I even know of, by the way. If if you think this is some personal attack at you, I promise that you it's not. I don't even know someone like this. But, you know, I don't want to be that person who's I, like... I... I'm the fucking witch lord of of Toronto. <laughs> Fear me. You know, like, yeah. fuck out of here. Yeah, I don't think any of us are after, like, fame, necessarily. I don't think yeah. any of us are, we have that in our, in our sights. Um, I'm after just, love and healing and intergenerational connection, you know? Mm-hmm. What were you going to yeah. say, Scott? I just want to help. I just mm-hmm. want to be like help people and and build bridges. Mm-hmm. That that's my thing. Yeah, I feel you know, that. I want to so make I'll go a more Bye. I don't know like a gentler, more um, emotionally aware magical community. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think that's mm-hmm. my goal. Yeah. So I'll talk a little bit about what I want to do in the next five years. Right. Mm-hmm. Um. I've been, like, really on an interesting path, and, like, this summer, I really connected with, like, my Native side a lot more. Not that I, like, hadn't been doing that, but I got some connections in, like, a very real way, and I started taking, um, I, I, I'm not gonna, like, put labels on anything, but I feel like I took some steps on my journey to learning more, mm-hmm. and I started getting enough... <laughs> 
you know that point as an occultist where um, you've learned enough baseline knowledge to start connecting stuff and keep branching out? Mm -hmm. It's only ever like when you have to break into something where you're like struggling to get a certain amount of base knowledge before you can learn more. Yeah, it's Mm -hmm. kind of like that, right? And I can finally, like, start learning more. I know people who I can go spend time with. Like, I'm trying to learn how to speak Cree. Like, I'm, I'm taking a lot, a lot of steps in my own, like, personal cultural stuff that's, like, not directly can, like, with what you would consider witchcraft. But it's still, like, very much my spiritual side. So um, mm-hmm. I'm very happy with that. But I'm going to be doing that. So I might be, like, quiet on that end for a little bit because I don't know how much of that I can, like put into the podcast right but i'm Mm -hmm. still very much going to be here and i don't see myself like disappearing from it in any regard right i just don't know how much um i'm really able to talk about any of that stuff because it's like really sacred and really like private right Mm -hmm. so i'm kind of like going on big personal journey um sort of stuff and i really don't know where i'm going to end up is the big long thing that i'm working to you know like i'm planning on uh moving around a little bit and like uh i'm kind of like still somebody who gets involved in activism you know and does stuff and i don't ever see that stopping necessarily so i think it come a day where like y'all gotta do the podcast when i'm in jail right and i don't know if i can they, that can happen, right? You remind me a lot of Starhawk, actually. What? Starhawk. She, what do you uh, mean? Do you know who she is? No. Nope. Um, she's a pretty prominent figure in, uh, like Wiccan circles. Um, she, she is super, super, super into activism, and she has been from the start. I think, in the seventies, she's been. Mm-hmm. I'm not. I'm not sure how old she is. She's, she's, been, she's, she's older. been around since. Um, uh, she's kind of like once Wicca came here from. The UK, yeah. You there? Yeah. Here. here okay. Here. Yeah. Once Back. Wicca came here from from the UK, uh, Starhawks was was pretty much front and center almost immediately, and. Her level of activism, it, it is, I agree, Jay. Yeah. I can see the... Well, I'm not, like, some giant activist. I don't necessarily know who she is either, so um, I'm not going to say that we're not entirely on a lake. I just don't know enough about her to say whether I am or not. You know? No, Starhawk is super cool. Um, I also, I think she lives, I think she is in a polycule... I think, but I know she lives in like um she lives in like like a Live community kind of household with other you know earth minded individuals um she yeah. lives she lives in like a cabin in the woods with uh like an internet connection somehow she has rigged that up um <clears throat> yeah she lives out in like um the hills of California, like out in like in the Ooh. wilderness kind of of California, which I really hope that her place is okay. I haven't heard anything. Um, about like uh, like her whole place getting burned down in the wildfires. I haven't heard anything about oh, that, yeah. so I, I would think the pagan community would explode if something like that happened. But I haven't heard anything, so um, I hope she is still doing okay out there. Um, but yeah, you you just remind me a lot of her. She she kind of just does, she kind of just does whatever she wants, and she's like, okay, arrest me. <laughs> You know, like, fine. <laughs> Arrest me for protesting. Arrest me for mm-hmm. trying to fucking make the world fucking better. Like, fuck you. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Arrest me for, like, making sure we got clean drinking water. How I'll, I'll definitely right. go to jail for that. Exactly. Like, I was reading um one of her books. She was talking about how the she had, like, in the city, they had this, like, little community center, and they were making um seed balls. I'm trying to remember exactly mm. what seed balls are, but it was just basically it was like a it was like a group of seeds in dirt and different nutrients that you compact into a ball and then you can easily plant them. Um and some someone in the neighborhood or something didn't like their organization or whatever the fuck was going on. And the police ended up seizing their seed balls, uh saying that they were going to be used as projectile weapons and fucking just nonsense and she's like okay we'll make more like 
take them we'll make more you can't stop us <laughs> you know like whatever so yes you you just yeah. uh you kind of remind me of starhawk fuck but... the government <laughs> you're you're uh your your spirits are very similar <laughs> Yeah, I'd probably give her a big high five and say, hey, you sound cool. Probably. That sounds about right. But, uh, yeah, I think that's kind of where I'm at, and I don't know how that's going to tie into the podcast in um, a reasonable way. Like, maybe I will get the okay from someone. I'll be like, no, it's okay. You can talk about certain stuff, and I will be able to. And maybe they'll be like, no, you should just probably keep your mouth shut, and that's what I'll do. So who's to say where things go for me? Um, but I don't know. At the end of the day, I'm still pretty committed to this, and I don't see myself walking away for any reason other than like I'm dead. Or, yeah, yeah, or in jail. Yeah, <laughs> I really hope um, that doesn't happen I mean, though. That would be unpleasant. I, I mean, I could, I can still actually do calls from jail. I'm pretty sure if that happened, right? I don't know. I'm not sure I don't how that works. Get, I don't. Not that much time. I think you get like fifteen, twenty minutes. I do a 15 minute call on the podcast and be like, hey, it's Sophia, call- Sophia calling y'all's update from jail. You know? <laughs> be tight. I think our audience would be like, oh, cool. Hey, what's up? I know. <laughs> hey, about my jail friends. They would love that, unfortunately. <laughs> we start interviewing all your, all your, uh, we interview your cellmate, you know? <laughs> yeah, tell you about my, my jail tattoo I've gotten, you know? It'd be great. <laughs> Unfortunately, I gotta skedaddle, everybody. Okay. All right, Scott, we love you. I love you guys. Be well. Be safe. Good night. Night. Yeah, the podcast has been pretty, uh, pretty spookum, though. Yeah, and there is there is one other thing that I do kind of want to like it just in my own personal goals. So there's there's really, I would say there's three main things that I really want to do in my own personal life. Um. Yeah, there's there's a there's like three main things that I want to do with my own personal goals. One is I even realized well I've been working at this law firm for a couple of months and I'm like, man, I do not want to do this forever. I just don't want to work for mm-hmm. someone forever. So I am going to go into business for myself. However it is, uh, I really want it to be, you know, my eulogy <sighs> writing business. I think that it will be successful and I'm going to put a lot of work into that going forward. So I want to be self-sustained. Uh, like self-sustainable i want to work for myself mm-hmm. and you know work for my own money for me that's the one thing that i want the second thing is i want to buy a house that has a decent sized yard and i because i want that to be like a place that is is totally mine and a place that i can really connect with those land spirits and 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 tie it into the third thing that i want which is i really want um I really want a coven again. I want a coven of people yeah. that that can gather in a physical location and I have a place for that to happen. So those are the three main things that I want and I and I think that they tie into the podcast very specifically because pretty much everything that I do is inherently kind of linked back to the podcast. I talk about it in some fashion. It it directs my mood or my my uh the direction of my thoughts during that time and i'm really excited for that phase of my life when i get to um have this coven and talk about forming it and and running it and evolving it and growing it i'm looking forward to that time when that Mm -hmm. happens i'm looking forward to those episodes and those sessions there's i noticed there's a lot of people who really want to like just kind of have their own space right now because like as a generation we millennials have been collectively denied that we will just not be, ever be allowed to have homes and we're like close to 30 and still renting or over 30 and still renting if you're in my case you know and it's just like fuck man yeah i mean like some people are fortunate that they can at least like rent like an apartment that's theirs right and they yeah. don't need a roommate some people are fortunate in that regard some are fortunate that they have a house but and some, people some are like still just want, like renting a room roommates right mm. mm-hmm. like i it's not good for my mental health to live alone and that's fair too and i just think like um you know a lot of millennials we but we do value we value our own having our own place of refuge i guess like we really we really value that because I think 
we've just been forced to be like crowded on top of each other because you know we can't we've just been fed this like rhetoric of like you know you can't you can't you can't you won't you won't you won't or and then it's like okay well i guess i can't and then it's like well why haven't you why haven't you why haven't you and you're like well what the fuck do you want from me you're telling me i can't i can't just want us to die (laughs) they just want to be cruel to us they just want to be cruel to us and blame us for their cruelty that's it well there is nothing else there is nothing more there is nothing less i'm not gonna let that happen because that oh that's not no it's not and i think you know i think when we even when we get a little a little dark a little this um on the podcast i really feel like our audience connects with that or else i don't think you guys would still be listening um or watching the darker episodes uh, yeah especially like what's up so i think I think we're all on the same wavelength. Um, I think we're all really feeling the same kind of vibes. And I'm I'm just really glad that we're able to do this and I'm glad that people like it. That that was the biggest thing is, you know, I it all started with I me and Scott talking in their kitchen and I was like, Look, I think other people would listen to us talk about this shit. Mm-hmm. And they were like, You think so? And I'm like, Well, we won't know unless we try. And so here we are now and i hope yeah. that we have i hope that i keep putting out episodes until the day that i die honestly i really hope that this keeps going on forever and maybe it'll be something that maybe another group of witches will come along and maybe it's something that we can grandfather turn, pass the torch yeah on. pass down and that would that would be incredible too. Like imagine that, like just having this other new generation come in and you can do that. Yeah. You just need to find a suitable replacement when the time comes. Mm-hmm. Cause you know, I don't, I don't think children are my future. Um, and, and even if children were, it's not to say that my kids would even be interested. So, um, yeah, but yeah, that's, this is definitely something that I hope continues on time and someone is able to to access these episodes forever whenever they wanted to um but i think we can kind of wrap it up here unless there's anything else that you kind of wanted to touch on i feel like that about covers at all honestly there's really so much i can say about talking about the podcast itself right before i i feel a little weird yeah like i I don't want to brag too much but um but i wanted to brag a little bit in this episode because well I guess it's that uh it's always that phrase you hear in like startup company like we started it from nothing but like we really did I started it with a, a laptop computer and a and my and my phone that was like yeah awkwardly wrapped to a kitchen chair so that's where it started from and you know we're still pretty garage band and grassroots and I'm okay with that I'm okay with where we're at and I'm okay, and I'm really excited to see where we're going so yeah i guess we'll sign off on that note um i hope everyone, yeah hope everyone enjoyed this little um milestone kind of update but maybe not because it's a happy episode and apparently you guys don't like happy episodes so <laughs> how about this then <laughs> fuck everything's bad death chaos ah ah uh, fuck trump uh. <laughs> <laughs> You can find Witches Betwixt on the big three social medias, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Our handle is Witches Betwixt, all one word, on all three platforms. We all check each one, except Twitter, which is exclusively run by me, Jay, but feel free to message us on any of them, and we'll get back to you. If you want to add your post to our online community, use the hashtag WBTWXT. The links to our official Facebook group, Discord server, and website are in the show notes below.